Let's look at it on our own devices. Okay. And then we can see each other's faces. Where, where will we find Using, it? On our website? Yeah, yeah, it's listed under 172. It's okay. So we I should, just posted the link in chat. Yep. We should use our own devices. <laughs> um, okay. So let's uh, do that then and walk through the, have Tucker walk us through the bill and the, um, the amendment. The amendment really is, as the secretary said, clarification. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Tucker Anderson from the Office of Legislative Counsel. Wonderful to see you all again. And so soon, day one, here we are. Uh, I'll walk you through S-172, which is Senator White's bill to provide temporary authority for alternative procedures for the 2022 annual meetings. Uh, the authority that is provided within the four corners of this bill is all carried over from uh, two other bills, uh, Act 162 from 2020 and some portions from Act uh, 92, uh, from the same session, and those were temporary uh, COVID response authority granted by the General Assembly. I'll start with section one, which declares legislative findings, intent, and purpose. Under these findings, it is stated that the General Assembly finds that the continued spread of COVID-19 in Vermont has potential to jeopardize the health, safety, and welfare of Vermonters, that are voting in the 2022 annual meetings. Uh, those meetings include, of course, not only the annual municipal meetings, but also the school district meetings that are required by law. Subdivision two, it states that in 2021, the General Assembly enacted Act 60 to authorize the use of outdoor polling places and the mailing of ballots to all active registered voters in municipalities that use uh, the Australian ballot system for local elections. However, concerns persist for the 2022 annual municipal meetings because, and here we come across the first error, I believe, of the 2022 session, because it states in subdivision A that in municipalities applying the Australian ballot system to those meetings, general law requires voters to apply for an early voter absentee ballot and uh, Chris is here and he can probably correct this because he worked with Amarin along with Will Senning, but I believe that's incorrect and that municipalities now under 17 BSA section 2680 uh, subsection F are permitted to just mail out uh, ballots to all of their active registered voters provided they've already adopted the Australian ballot system. So maybe that's something that should be quickly cleaned up in the bill as it moves forward. But subdivision B is still correct. Many municipalities want to continue their custom of conducting annual meetings using floor votes. Those are the voice votes that uh, many Vermonters are familiar with. Subsection B states the intent and purpose of the bill. The intent of the General, General Assembly here is that the citizens of Vermont should be able to protect their health, safety, and welfare while also continuing to exercise their right to participate in annual municipal meetings. Uh, accordingly, the purpose of this act is to permit municipalities to, by vote of the legislative body, apply the Australian ballot system to the municipality's 2022 annual meeting exclusively, and two, to move the date of the municipality's 2022 annual meeting to a potentially safer date later in the year. These are uh, two pieces of authority that had been previously granted for the 2021 annual meetings. Section two contains all of the operative temporary authority that is granted by this act. Starting in subsection A that deals with the Australian ballot authority. It's on line five, page three. Notwithstanding the provisions of 17 VSA section 26. 80 subsection A, and I'll flag that because this is very specifically setting aside that subsection, and 16 VSA section 711E that applies to school districts, that requires the voters of a municipality to vote to apply the provisions of the Australian ballot system to the annual or special meeting of the municipality, 
in the year 2022, any municipality may apply the Australian ballot system to its annual meeting held in the year 2022 by vote of its legislative body. Any such vote shall also apply the Australian ballot method of voting to any vote that occurs as a result of the annual meeting. So there's a nexus there, such as a budget revote or a reconsideration vote. So again, this is applying Australian ballot to the annual meetings of those municipalities. And then if there's a link between that annual meeting and a later vote, then the authority for the Australian ballot continues on and would be applied to those subsequent revotes or votes for reconsideration. Subsection B, starting with subdivision B1, a municipality may use electronic means without designating a physical location to conduct public informational hearings that are held pursuant to 17 VSA 2680H in advance of the municipality's annual meeting. Uh, to bring us all onto the same page, these are informational meetings that are held where the voters get together, discuss issues related to the annual meeting, and that in this particular instance are most often overseen by the moderator that is elected at the local level. Uh, this subsection is going to set aside some authority for municipalities to conduct uh, these informational hearings uh, using an electronic means with a few specific requirements. So moving on to subsection B2 and some of those requirements. When a public informational hearing is held electronically under subdivision one, the municipality shall use technology that permits the attendance of the public through electronic or other means, allow the public to access the hearing by telephone whenever that is feasible, and finally, to post information on how the public may access meetings electronically and include that information in the published agenda for the hearing. Final requirement, unless unusual circumstances make it impossible for them to do so, the legislative body of each municipality and each school board shall record any public informational hearing held pursuant to this subsection. As you may recall, the same requirements that we just walked through in each of the subdivisions A through C and then that subdivision three were the same requirements that were applied to municipalities under the temporary authority as it was applied to the open meeting law and some of those suspended requirements to hold totally electronic meetings. So this is taking those same requirements and applying it here to the informational hearings and says, hey, municipalities, if you decide to hold your informational hearing via electronic means, you're going to conduct it in this manner with this sort of notice to the voters, uh, and you're going to record your meetings in the same manner that you were recording your meetings under the open meeting law in 2021, 2020. Subsection C, notwithstanding any provision of law to the contrary, in the year 2022, a municipal legislative body may vote to move the date of the municipality's 2022 annual meeting to a date later in the year 2022. And in subdivision two, the town of Brattleboro may hold its annual representative town meeting by electronic means. These were two pieces of authority that had previously been granted uh, in, for the 2021 annual meetings. In any municipality that moves the date of its 2022 annual meeting pursuant to subdivision C1 of this section, municipal officers shall serve until the meeting and until successors are chosen. In subsection E, there is some temporary authority pulling all of this together. The Secretary of State may waive statutory deadlines or other statutory provisions or provisions set forth in a school district's articles of agreement related to a municipal election as necessary in order for a municipality to apply the Australian ballot system to its meeting 
in accordance with subsection A of this section. Uh, that authority applies to statutory provisions set forth in a municipal charter or provisions set forth in a school district's articles of agreement if the waiver is requested by the municipality. The act is set to take effect on passage, and I suspect that if this does move forward, that might be fairly soon. Would you like me to move on to the uh, amendment and discuss it all together here? All right, I will. Yes, please. The committee uh, is proposing an amendment to the bill that would add a subsection F that would state expressly that the provisions of 17 VSA sec, subsection, section 2680 subsection E shall apply to any municipality that votes to hold the 2022 annual municipal meeting by Australian ballot. Uh, to pause there, this is a subsection that states that when a municipality is voting to hold its future meetings and potentially all future meetings by Australian ballot, they cannot hold that vote by Australian ballot. So if there is floor vote municipality out there that wants to move to Australian ballot, they must hold that vote on the floor with everyone voice voting as their custom currently is. They can't use an Australian ballot vote to change to Australian ballot. That stays the same. Now, to be clear, the act, or excuse me, the bill, as it is written, does not set aside this requirement. So really what this amendment is doing is it's stating very clearly that the general law still applies that we are not setting it aside, we're not suspending it, and that if you wanna to change to Australian ballot beyond 2022, you're going to have to do it at a floor vote according to current custom for your municipality. And we double down with the second statement here, the end of subsection F. A municipality shall not warn any question on whether the municipality shall adopt the Australian ballot method of voting on a permanent basis, for any or all articles for any subsequent municipal elections. Maybe a bit belt and suspenders or overkill, but we have two statements here that 2680E still applies and that you can't use the temporary authority to change to Australian ballot on a permanent basis. Thank you. Are, are there any questions? And I, that, and I know that that last the amendment and those two statements make it sound like we're talking to third graders, but there was really a misunderstanding among some towns and even their town attorneys last year about doing that. They, they thought they could use the Australian ballot to move to Australian ballot and a couple towns have done it. So Senator Collimore, did you have a? Thank you, Madam Chair. No, I'm in full support of the amendment, uh, I don't mind being overly clear. Uh, I think that actually uh, serves us well, at least in this regard. I have a question for Tucker though. Assuming that all of what you just read at the time referenced the 2021 annual meetings, I failed to see how anybody could have had any misunderstanding about what this committee's intent was. And I don't mean to put you on the spot, Tucker, but uh, I'm not a lawyer, so I, I, I have no, I mean, if I read that it only counts for the 2021 town meeting, how could I not understand that I couldn't make it permanent? There were actually two pieces there that were fairly express that 2680E was still going to apply. The first was that all of the authority under the previous act was exclusively for 2021. And the second was that we only not withstood one subsection of 2680, and that was subsection A. Subsection E, which had that restriction, was still in place. And beyond that, I, I won't comment on what interpretations of this committee's intent or the previous act were out there. Understood, I'd appreciate your response. Um, so yeah, I'm in full support of the uh, bill 
the underlying bill and also the amendment. And as I said, I believe we need to be super clear about what we intend. And it, yeah, Senator Plana. You're, you're muted, you're muted. Sorry about that. I support the amendment and the bill. I have a question though about, I thought in the past, this one says you don't have to have a designated location for informational meetings. Correct. Whereas before we did need a designated place. I just want to be clear that that's a change we're making in this way we're doing this. I'm not saying I'm for or against it. I just wonder, want to be clear that it's a change. So uh, without getting too in the weeds and too confusing sure. about this, that subsection is making sure that folks who interpret the open meeting law to apply to these informational hearings understand that they don't have to follow under this authority, the general law under the open meeting law that requires a designated physical meeting location where staff are required to attend. Okay. Now it gets really confusing and potentially is a contentious debate about whether the open meeting law can even be applied to a meeting where the moderator is the officer that's overseeing the discussion being held by the voters. Is there a public body involved? Does the open meeting law apply? I certainly don't wanna be the one to make that interpretation for uh, all of my legal colleagues out there in Vermont. Uh, but here we're saying in general terms, you can hold this meeting electronically and you do not have to designate a physical meeting location. Thanks. Any more questions or clarification for Tucker? I think I, I know that, and I agree with you, Senator Calmer. I don't know how it could have been misinterpreted, but clearly it was, even by some town attorneys. And um, so that's why we're trying to make it very clear. And um, the other thing I think that, uh, was misinterpreted was that I think the only the only town that was given, given permission to have their town meeting uh, virtually or remotely or whatever however we call it was Brattleboro and the reason for that is because they have they know who their 150 people are that are attending their town meeting because they're representatives but there were towns out there that did that held these crazy town meetings that were both in person and virtual and um, they were pretty chaotic, I think. Um, so I don't know, there's nothing to do about that, but I, I think some towns mm -hmm. just went ahead and did it anyway. So, um, yes, yeah, Senator Rahm Hinsdale. Um, I mean, I, I think just while we have Tucker, I, I think this is a technical question. I'm trying to better understand, you know, obviously com communities are, commu towns are reaching out to us and saying they'd like to do other municipal meetings it, with remote options. And just while we're on the subject, so I can go back and tell them, you know, what I understand do we, was there a time bound limit on remote meetings? Did they only have special emergency order permission? When did that expire? I, I do think, I, I get that this has to move quickly. I think that is valuable to move quickly as well. I mean, we have our highest case rate today and Omicron is extremely contagious. So I, I see it as something that we, we should be discussing with some urgency as well in order to understand that. I'm gonna to respond to that. We do, we are going to do that and we will have a bill on open and Tucker will um, work with us to get that bill um, that will allow them to do it remotely without having to have a physical um, presence, but that we can pass that next week. Okay. This one has to go because towns have to, they have to know um, what they can do before they set their agendas and their agendas, I believe, their articles have to be all done by somewhere around January 20th. Okay. So you may have said that in an email. I'm not, I didn't I, want to make it seem like you were hiding something. I just wanted to make sure I understood that yeah. that was like next week's urgency, but it's still Yeah, urgent. I think that is also very urgent. I've heard from a lot of towns and different um, 
regional planning people and everybody about that. So, but we, I, I made the decision not to put it on here because I think that's a little more complicated and we need to make sure we're doing that right. And this one was so simple. So anybody else want to weigh in? Gwen, Secretary Condos, Chris. Yes, Secretary Condos. You are muted. Sorry, I thought I clicked it. Um, yeah, this this um, bill was designed to be simple and to move quickly uh, because essentially we need to have this thing signed into law by not this weekend, but the following weekend. Uh, so the, the goal is that, that the House and the Senate can get together on this quickly, get it to the governor's desk and he can sign it into law um, as quickly as possible. Because as Senator White said, uh, the first deadline I think for town meeting comes on around January 20th. The second deadline is January 24th. So we really need to get things in place as quickly as possible. Uh, I know we've had, um, you know, Chris and myself and Will have had extensive uh, conversations with VLCT, with Gwyn and uh, with, with Karen about this issue. And we've all agreed that it needs to be uh, kept concise, simple, and move quickly. Thank you. Gwyn, would you like to? Hello, everybody. Good to see everyone's faces. Um, yeah, I, just to reiterate what uh, the Secretary of State said, we are in agreement that this needs to go first because of the timeline. Um, I don't think even when this bill was anticipated to be drafted up, we had any, we're close to the numbers of cases that we have now. So um, the this issue of temporary meeting um, is becoming a, a real pressing concern. Um, so hopefully that will be taking up very soon thereafter this uh, moves forward. But the reason Karen Horn is not here right now is because she's actually on a webinar with um, Will Sennings from the Secretary of State's office to talk about the 22 town meeting. And they're actually talking about this bill right now to let everybody know sort of like what's going on and what to anticipate. So um, she apologizes for not being here, but she'll be here later. But thank you for taking up this bill early on. So if they're in the middle of a webinar right now talking about this, do I have any interest, does anybody have any interest in moving this today? Yeah. Senator sure. Colomar? Thank you, Madam Chair. The only thing um, that's preventing me from saying yes is something Tucker said about one of the provisions having to be corrected. Okay. If not, so, I would vote it out today. So Tucker, the question is, how soon can you make that correction? 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. I was going to say, I bet you can do it this time. Okay. So what we're going to do right now, I'm going to suggest is that we move to the Secretary of State's office to hear their um, priorities for the year. And then um, whenever Tucker is done, he comes back to us and the Senator Colomore is going to be so excited to move this. Hey, hey. Works for me. Okay. Because I think that the sooner we can get this done, the the better the better it is. And we, we don't have any delays, but we don't know what's going to happen on the other side. Um, and I don't. I, they're they're set to take it up as soon as we get it. But we just just to make sure that we're allowing the time. So, okay. Yeah. So, bye, Tucker. We'll see you in a little while. And. Um, so with that, can we switch to the Secretary of State's office to hear what their priorities for the coming year are for us? Mm -hmm. Certainly. Okay. Um, whoops. So first I wanna thank you and welcome you all back. It's, it's great to see you. I wish we could see each other in person, uh, but uh, we all recognize where we are. And uh, I, think, I think back to March of 2020, when the governor put us into uh, a shutdown and, and whatever, uh, 
I think we all probably thought we were only going to be four to six weeks and we'd be back, back, you know, doing our business in person. But uh, here we are two years later and we're still having the same discussions. Um, it's been tough on us. It's been tough on everybody. It's been tough on the people who contact us. Uh, but thanks to the hard work of our team uh, and all of our online systems that we've put in place over the last 10 years, uh, we continue to provide the services and the responsiveness that, that uh, Vermonters have come to expect. Uh, we were fortunate because of all the planning and, and processing that we had done before that um, uh, we were able to make the move to remote access very quickly. And, and in most cases, Vermonters have 24 seven access to uh, the things that they need from the Secretary of State's office. For instance, they can register their new business or, or file their annual report 24 seven. They can uh, go to OPR and uh, uh, submit their license application. Uh, uh, you know, they can go to uh, uh, elections and, and, and file reports, uh, campaign finance reports, lobbyist disclosure reports. It's all done online. Uh, so we've done a really good job about getting to that point. We know that this is a busy committee for this year and you have many COVID related issues, including of course, redistricting, pensions, just to name a few. And we appreciate the time. Senator White, are you, is, is this committee gonna handle the Senate redistricting or are you gonna have the redistricting committee separate? Separate redistricting committee. Okay. Um, so the first thing on our agenda and our highest priority right now, obviously is the town meeting legislation, which uh, you know we, we've just heard and, and hopefully we'll be moving very quickly. Uh, we know that redistricting and um, uh, it needs, essentially it needs to be signed into law by April 1st um, because the first deadline for or beginning of, of uh, uh, petition, nominating petition uh, deadline is starts on April 24th. Uh, so it's not so bad for a statewide uh, as far as submitting a nominating petition, but for for uh, a House or a Senate member, you need to know what your district is in order to start collecting those signatures as you go. So we think that if you can get it by April 1st, since you only need 50 or 100, depending on whether it's House or Senate, uh, that that uh, uh, that should give you ample time. Uh, we do know that the, the uh, Legislative Apportionment Board, and I'm, I guess you'll be hearing from them as well if you haven't already, but they are the by a four to three majority, so it was definitely a split majority, uh, have proposed single member districts. Uh, I will say from my perspective, it's noble in concept, but very difficult to do in application. Um, if you go to the Vermont Constitution and the state statutes, both actually contemplate multi-member districts. Uh, nominating petitions, as I said, are due between April 25th and May 26th. That is, those dates are not arbitrary. They can't just be, the only date that could possibly be moved would be the April 25th, May 26th is, is really pretty much set. Uh, that's the, the final deadline uh, that we need. Uh, so, but on the same hand, and this, all of these deadlines for elections this coming year start with November election day. And we have to back up from there. We have to back up 45 days for when ballots have to be mailed out to overseas and military and Vermonters get 45 days early voting. Then you have to back up to when the primary is and, and all these dates start to back up and there is not a lot of room to pick up if, if for instance, you guys went, uh, several weeks past April 1st on, on uh, settling on, on district maps. Um, so I will just say simply, there's no room for delay. Um, we do know, and this is, I'm just gonna make you aware, but there is um, some uh, election threat language, uh, but also uh, maybe it should be including all elected officials and state workers and local boards and officials. Uh, this is to strengthen some of our laws. Uh, that's going to be in the Judiciary Committee. I think Senator Sears has it. Um, 
And part of this is, is the result of, as many of you have heard, our office received uh, um, death threats. I guess you can't put it any other way. Uh, last year in November and December, and then we received more again in this uh, past October. It was a, there was a national story about it. Uh, it. It's also to be blunt, several of my colleagues are still under 24 seven uh, security uh, details because they've been threatened uh, um, considerably throughout the year. Um, part of the problem has been that the state law is not as strong, strong as it should be compared to the federal law. The federal law, and this is coming from the state's attorney and from uh, public safety, the state, the federal law has guardrails built around it that have been through the, uh, the Supreme Court. Uh, so we know, we know what's allowed, uh, but the Vermont law is much weaker. And uh, I know Senator Sears is interested as several of your members um, in the House and Senate were also threatened. Um, I'm not going to get into ranked choice voting because I think Senator White has already spoken about that, that it's, it's really not an issue until 24. Uh, so you, there's plenty of time to do something for that. Um, we are considering, um, although I don't think it's, it's, it's necessary right away, but something that should be on the, on the back burner somewhere is emergency powers for the Secretary of State in case of uh, an emergency when you're out of session. Um, and specifically, you know, if, if Hurricane Irene had hit at the same time as an election day, uh, we wouldn't have had much, much chance to do anything uh, with regards to elections. Uh, so, I, you know, I think there's, there's a lot that needs to be done, but that's, at this point, I can't see dealing with it right now. Um, we also want to talk about, and this is again, something that could be dealt with next year probably, but uh, piggybacking on state primary and general election. Municipalities often will, will uh, put a bond vote or something on the same day as our state primary and general election. But then they, the townspeople get upset because they get our, our ballots from us for the statewide primary and for the general election 45 days ahead of time. And they don't receive the ballots for the, the local election until 20 days before the election. And people, it's confusing to people as to what, what they're filling out and sending back. So, uh, and, and town meeting, I think, is, is also now that many towns are starting to go to, to vote by mail, uh, you know, city of Burlington, city of Montpelier, uh, and other towns. Um, I think that the what is now considered to be the normal of 20 days before the election is just not enough time to be mailing a ballot out, having someone fill it out, and getting it back. Uh, so we would suggest that you at least go to a 30 day uh, for mailing ballots out uh, instead of 20. But that's something that can be dealt with next year when we do a, 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 a uh, overall elections bill. And finally, on the elections front, I just want to make sure that the committee is aware the HAVA dollars are starting to shrink. And if we don't, if the federal government doesn't step in uh, at some point in the near future to start providing more money to states uh, for elections, uh, we will be out of money. We're, we're about to spend close to $3 million for new tabulators for the state. Uh, the tabulators we have have been around for uh, over 20 years in some cases. Uh, they've reached their usefulness, life, life uh, usefulness. Uh, and and we, we really have to, uh, we're going to go to new machines that, are, that actually work better uh, and, and instead of being optical scanners, they're going to be digital scanners, which means they're more accurate and, and have less chance of rejecting ballots that you see today. Um, in the area of open meeting law, we'll have this discussion next week or whenever Secretary uh, Senator White brings it up. Uh, I think the, the underlying points to remember is the open meeting law provides for 
the public's right to know, the public's right to attend, and the public's right to participate. So we're, we think it's okay to lift, temporarily lift the physical meeting requirements, but we're not sure that it makes sense for on a permanent basis at this point. So if, if the committee wants to talk about temporary, temporarily lifting those requirements, uh, we're fine, we, we can have that discussion. Um, you know, I think some of the factors that you need to look at are when's, what's the end date? Uh, if there's no state of emergency, how do you end it? Uh, would we pick an arbitrary date, April 1st or May 1st or, or whatever? Uh, or do we tie it to COVID levels if there's no state of emergency ever called? For instance, right now, we're not in a state of emergency. At least according to the governor, we're not in a, in a state of emergency. So uh, there, there's no backing that we have to defend ourselves for, for going forward. Um, I think anything that you do as far as lifting the temporary location physical uh, meeting requirements should include requiring remote options, including a telephone. Uh, so I think there has to be a way for people to access the meetings because again, going back to the public has a right to know, to attend and to participate. Um, and not everybody has a computer and not everybody's computer works well. As And I think exhibit A for me is I was cut off twice today while I was sitting here. Um, as far as OPR goes, we got great news there. We have no OPR bill this year. So um, Senator White, there, there is no OPR bill that we're gonna have to be pushing forward. There is a notary digital land record bill uh, that uh, is important to both OPR and to Vasara, I'm sorry, to Vasara. Um, and these are updates to notary uh, to the notary laws. Um, basically, it's it's the revised uniform law called Rulona. Uh, there's also uh, er, 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 uh, Chris. You know how to pronounce that. <laughs> I should probably let Chris handle this piece of it. But the Uniform Real Property Electronic Recording Act. This is about allowing town clerks to accept electronic records for recording and performing. Uh, electronic recording of land records overall. Uh, I won't get into much more detail because that's something we can do later. Um, we think that this should be a separate bill, perhaps a committee bill, um, and we'll go from there. Uh, home improvement contractors, nothing really to say this year as far because it, it passed the House, it passed the Senate with changes, and then time ran out. It's over. I think it's sitting in the House now uh, waiting for their action to move it to the governor's desk. Um, we did issue three, four reports this year. Uh, OPR issued a report on telehealth. This bill is going to be dealt with, I believe, in some of the other committees, um, uh, healthcare committees. Uh, uh, but essentially, it's about COVID licensure waivers of Act 60, which expire on, on March 31st. That needs to be updated as quickly as possible. Psychologist uh, prescribing information report was, was filed. There's the joint report from OPR and the Agency of Education about discipline. Uh, and uh, the, the only comment I'll make on that at this point in time is that right now, I believe that transparency and accountability has been misplaced in, in and because this was a joint report, we couldn't really bring that out, but we can talk about that later. Uh, and then there was a real estate sunset review, which will be presented to the committee as well. Um, that's pretty much it for us. Um, we'll obviously be here to respond to the needs of the committee. Um, I, as you all know, this committee is, is uh, important to me as uh, I was once chair of this committee and Senator White was my vice chair. So uh, it, it, uh, it is, this is a great committee. I love this, this, uh, this committee and, and uh, we, we stand before you to help as much as we can. Chris, did you want to add anything? I think you covered it, Jim. Thank you. Um, I'll just point out a couple of additions on that uh, issue of local 
ballots getting out earlier. I understand there is a National Guard caucus in, in the legislature. Representative Sebelius is heavily involved in that. They're going to be taking this issue up a week from today. Uh, so they may have some recommendations for you if they, they think that there ought to be any changes around getting those ballots to our overseas and military voters. Um, the digital land records issue, also just for your information, House Commerce has put forth a bill. I don't know if it has a number yet, but it's sponsored by uh, Representative Marcotte and Representative Kimball and um, contains what the title insurance folks and uh, bankers uh, and real estate bar are pr proposing, and we are proposing something different than what they are proposing. We all have the same goal in mind of improving our land records and standardizing how our town clerks handle those land records, provide access, provide electronic real estate transactions, but we differ on how we would get there. So there are some alternate approaches uh, being proposed to uh, up modernizing our, our land records. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to say, I'm glad to hear that the committee is really interested in the ethics standards for state employees and um, look forward to hearing your work on that bill. Jeanette, you're muted. I see that. Senator, did you have a question? I did. I did. Um, just going back, uh, Mr. Secretary, to your report. Um, probably a good thing we don't have OPR bills this year. One of the things I was interested in following up on was a change with, I believe a change within OPR um, to make sure that we have good data about the types of business owners we have in the state, um, women and minority owned businesses and other ways to do a better job, you know, tracking uh, our data. Is, is that complete? Is that further along? Do you have an update on that? So uh, I'm going to pass this off to Chris in a second, but I do do want to say, I, are you talking about corporate registrations, not not professional regulation? For some reason, I thought this was a comp like we were, you know what I'm I'm mixing them up, but we were also talking with, within OPR about understanding the demographics of people who sought licenses. I'm thinking no. of them as smaller businesses, like sole proprietorships. So. I am merging the two in my mind, probably yeah. accurately. Senator, I think it's I think it's both. You know, so there are some small businesses licensed by OPR, and of course, any small business has to register with the Secretary of State's Office Corporations Division. We have our Biz Portal project that um, stalled out for a number of reasons over the last year, COVID being one of them. Um, some contracting issues, some document management issues. We do have a survey in place and ready to go when it finally does launch that will ask those demographic questions on uh, women owned, um, BIPOC owned, um, veteran owned. And so we can gather a lot more information and connect people who register these businesses with uh, resources that might be available to them. And of course, providing a lot of more information to the legislature to drive your policy decisions uh, in, in the economic development workforce and other things in, in your uh, work in the legislature. So it's definitely a work in progress. We hope to have it as just as soon as possible, but we don't have a, a definite go live date on that yet. Thanks. Senator Clarkson. Uh, thank you, Chris, because, you know, it, there's so much on our plate. We need to remember an economic development to get you to come in to do an update on the portal because that's Happy. been a baby we're very proud of and want very much to see launched. And that data is very important for us to be collecting. Um, so uh, one question I wanna make sure we continue and I just had assumed it was going to be continued is the reciprocity licensure work because as we look at our workforce development crisis here in Vermont, one of the low hanging fruit pieces that we've been addressing with OPR and Lauren and, and in different professions has been the extension of reciprocity with licensure. I as, had assumed that would be part of the OPR bill and that was a clearly maybe a mistake on my part, but um, do you have an update or I guess we could ask Lauren, Madam Chair, we could ask Lauren to come in and update us on where we are with that and where some of those opportunities lie. We, we definitely okay. should have Lauren in to talk about that. Yeah. I can tell you off the top of my head, you have passed 
legislation that authorizes us to do expedited licensure for people who have three years of experience or more in other states, lets in them every, come in. Right, in, in every, every profession. profession, right. Yep, and we've licensed, um, I think it's around 1,200 people now this year. That started on January 1st, around 1,200 people this year alone on that expedited processing, which is cutting edge for uh, very few states do that. No, we're, we're very proud of that, I, I, I realize, but I felt that there were some additional compacts and, uh, you know, other, yep. other expedited licensure yes. things we're working on. And I, so I, anyway, we'll look forward we'll to have, that. We'll have Lauren come in yeah. and talk to us. And Chris, I assume you meant since January of 2021, you've done 1,200, not <laughs> since January of 2022, yeah. because Actually, that would be pretty... It, if they're trying to keep up with our COVID cases. Oh, I see. So are there any other questions for the Secretary of State's office? If not, what I'm gonna suggest, so we take a five minute break because I know some of us need a five minute break. Good idea. And we come back at uh, 3.17, my computer says 3.12, 3.17, we'll hear from both Tucker and the LCT. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. We're gonna, in a couple of minutes, or not, in a few minutes, we're gonna vote on the bill to extend the uh, options for town meeting day. But before we do that, we're gonna hear from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns in terms of the priorities that might be of interest to the committee. So why don't you do that? Um, either one of you start us off. Karen? Just so you know, I put my mute on so that while I was under the desk, if I swore, you wouldn't hear me. Can you hear us now? Yeah. Okay. So, so Jeanette, we decided, I had decided that we would do the League of Cities and Towns first and then do the bill when you got back. But if you're back and you'd like to just do that, you're muted anyway. So we're not yeah, do that. Do that. <laughs> do which? Do the VLCT first, as long as you've okay, decided that. Okay, Karen, take it away, Karen. Okay, um, thank you. And, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to you about our priorities so early in the session. I did send to uh, Gail, um, uh, maybe yesterday, our, prior, our amended priorities for the 2022 session. And there are a few of them that um, relate to your committee. So I thought I might just run through those. Uh, and, and Gwen is gonna talk about some of them and, and I'm gonna talk about some of them. Um, firstly, uh, thank you so much for taking up the town meeting bill as, as quickly and efficiently as you did. We, I was just on a webinar with um, close to 70 local officials who want to know what's happening with town meeting 2022. So we're um, very gratified that, you, that you're addressing that issue right off the bat. Um, we would like to focus on a few additional issues, one being um, remote meetings, uh, one uh, one being environmental justice legislation that's been introduced, uh, tools to address COVID, and then um, law enforcement and emergency medical services type issues, which I believe, uh, and of course, um, governance. How could I forget governance? Sorry. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, we, we are wholly and enthusiastically in support of the town meeting legislation. Um, we also hope that the committee will take up legislation that allows municipalities to hold wholly remote meetings, um, select board meetings, planning commission meetings, boards and commissions type meetings, at least on a temporary basis. We had 1700 cases today. It's kind of mind boggling to even think about, but the, the law right now says that um, there has to be one person in a physical location in order to hold a meeting of a, a municipal body or um, regional commission or um, in any entity like that. 
and a uh, state agency, I believe as well. Um, and there's a couple of considerations there. Firstly, um, somebody gets to draw the short straw and be the person that's in the town office or the town hall for a meeting and welcomes uh, whoever chooses to come through the door. And there are not only health considerations around that, but there are um, safety considerations. If you have one person at a, in a municipal building at night, um, you know, that, that's open to the public. So we're suggesting that um, in much the same way that the Senate just voted this morning to stay remote for a while, that, that you would authorize remote meetings for municipalities and, and state and entities like that, uh, potentially through uh, May 31st. We're just throwing that date out, but if you did that, then we would know that the weather was good by the end of May, theoretically, and um, we would know that um, you wouldn't have to revisit it during the legislative session. So um, we are also supportive of the Climate Action Plan recommendation to make remote meetings a permanent feature for, um, for municipal regional type meetings. Um, I know that the Secretary of State has a different perspective on that, on the permanent option, but at least in the near term, uh, we, we urge you to pass something that allows for remote meetings during this um, pretty scary COVID uh, season that we're in. I also wanted to mention the environmental justice legislation that was introduced by um, Senator Rom Hinsdale, among others. Uh, last session, our board did endorse that legislation at their meeting in November. Um, and we're hoping that it moves. There are 40 some states that have some kind of environmental justice law guidance policy on the books um, today. So it seems like Vermont is actually way behind the eight ball on that front. Um, we, uh, we, I'm going to let Gwen talk a little bit about the governance issues as she worked uh, quite hard on coming up with a list of provisions that might be reasonable to pass in terms of ordinance authority for for local governments. So um, Gwen, I don't see you, but there you here. are. Okay. Here I am. Um, thank you, Karen. Um, Senator Whitehead um, mentioned this um, when the committee was going through some of their priorities and bills that were coming through. And S-181 is the this sort of governance bill we've been looking at. Um, we know that your committee has been champions on um, pushing forward more um, flexibility at the local level, doing um, uh, local governance matters, and um, we understand that the resistance is in the um, is in the house, unfortunately. But we're trying to find a way um, to sort of meet in the middle and find um, common grounds and sort of go um, with what the flow is from um, legislative council um, that uh, we've heard in uh, past testimony, um, especially when we've been looking at bills or sorry charter proposals that. Um, were before you that had asked to borrow other charter provisions from other towns um, or expand local authority. Um, the uh, legislative council um, had said that they were sort of unconstitutional proposals. So um, knowing that some towns um, couldn't go that avenue, we're trying to basically go via the statutory um, language, just sort of what's already in place. And um, uh, we looked at it through the lens of providing more um, uh, 24 VSA 2291 ordinance authority. So that list of what towns can do via ordinance, expanding upon that. Um, also making tweaks throughout statute to um, adjust really local governance matters, um, basically eliminating um, archaic offices, um, allowing more flexibility for uh, either appointment or election of certain officials, expanding the number of board members on certain boards um, or lessening the amount of uh, folks on those boards, um, you know, matters like that. So um, we are hoping that this is gonna be sort of a first step um, 
I hate to call it low hanging fruit, but sort of take some easy steps um, this year um, and get some positive um, feedback from you folks. And then um, every year thereafter sort of add to that sort of list. Um, some of the authorities will have to go back to voters for approval. Some of it could be legislative body authority, but we can get into the details later, but it's basically sort of trying to find a middle ground where we can get the ball rolling and sort of try to find some um, small changes that'll have big impact at the local level. Great. Um, is, is that, did you have more to say, Gwen or Karen, or is that uh, for right now where you are? Um, well, we have heard in conversations late last year with um, Representative Gannon um, that he would be interested in pursuing this kind of an approach uh, oh. on, on several fronts. So it's somewhat more hopeful than previous endeavors, I would say. Um, we, he did indicate that he'd be um, interested, for instance, in extending local option tax authority to all municipalities without um, going through the, uh, the, the you know, charter process. And he um, seems fairly interested and receptive to the issues around like numbers of people on boards and archaic offices being eliminated and those kinds of things. So I think we have a starting place for a conversation there. Yeah, and we definitely will be taking that bill up. And you weren't here when we talked about the open meeting law, but we will be um, crafting a bill here. And I'm just wondering is if um, <clears throat> there's a possibility that we can do that on Thursday or Friday, or if we can do that on Wednesday, Tucker, is Tucker with us? Yeah, he is. Okay. Um, if on Wednesday we have the, uh, we're on the floor at one and then we have the governor's state of the state at two, if we can start having the discussion on the open meeting law at 3.15 when we're done with the, gov the state of the state um, and start crafting the bill. Does that make sense to anybody? Sure. Perfect. Okay. Carpe diem. Because we do want to get that, that done pretty soon. And if we start the discussion on Wednesday afternoon, we can um, get the testimony from different people on and, and go forward. Okay. The, um, the next issue that we wanted to talk and a little bit Yes. Allison, Madam, has your hand yeah. I'd just like to add the the jurisdictional issue on local option tax isn't just GovOps. No, I, I we we're not going to go into the details no. now when we right, get. But I'm just I'm just curious because that's a you know the big impediment for that is ways and means. So right. I, so it's great that John is w willing to chat about that, but that's like just the beginning. Yeah, I just don't want us to go into detail on any of the issues right now we're just yeah. raising the issues but if we get into the detail we won't have time to vote out our town meeting bill okay we're ready we're poised so no i think that uh vlct has a few more issues to bring up there there's just a couple more to mention and um uh, if you look at our priorities, you'll see that there's quite a few that are not necessarily related to GovOps committee um, housing being a huge priority for us this year. But um, one that does land in your committee has to do with law enforcement and invert emergency medical services and sort of the, um, the, the, the difficulties that we're having with both those sectors at the local level. And, and again, Gwen is the best person equipped to talk about those a little bit. I don't want us to talk about them now because we really, I just want us to highlight the, what the issues, what the topics are, because I really want to make sure that we have time to discuss and make sure that we have the town meeting vote uh, bill. And we will take that up. Uh, we talk, We did talk about that a little bit earlier and about regionalization and um, dispatch and that whole ball of wax. So I'm sorry to cut you off, but um, we'll, we definitely will take it up. 
Okay, we're finished then. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you had more more things on your list. We have hundreds of things in our list, but we pared it down for you. Okay. <laughs> so any questions for VLCT about there? Is the environmental justice bill in our committee or is that in natural resources? I, I'm not really sure where it is. It, it, it may it's be in natural resources. resources. It's in natural resources. I, I did a lead sponsor in introduction last session in the last couple of weeks and it's right. in Senate natural resources. Okay. okay. It, it, it's, it's Chris's uh, in Chris's, it's across yeah. the hall. All right, thank you. And um, so what we're gonna do is let's vote on the um, town meeting bill if we have a motion and then we'll talk about our the schedule for the next couple of days. Does, is that okay? Sure. Okay. So Senator Colmore, did you wanna make a motion? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, I do. Um, I'm kind of trapped because I don't know what the number of the bill is. It S172. Yes. Yes. Right. Version two, version two as amended. Version two as amended. So I would move that the committee vote out favorably S172, version two as amended. Senator well, we haven't amended it. So I think that first we have to um, vote oh, yeah. on amending amending the bill S one seventy two and then vote it out. So well, my mo I'm sorry. Go ahead, Senator Clarkson. My I, my question is: We haven't actually had Tucker walk through the amendment. So he went off to draft the amendment, which is, I believe, Section F. The, no, he well, he he went off to make a fix on some language. He, he right. did a correction, but I think the amendment was what he walked through it before. Right, but the what he was going off to fix, we don't need to go through. Is he? You just fixed. Well, it. we okay. can. Okay, let's go through it just to make sure. Tucker. <clears throat> Good afternoon again, everyone. Uh, version two of the amendment has been posted. Uh, the only change from version one that we walked through earlier is there is a new instance of amendment that removes that incorrect reference to the requirement that voters request early absentee ballots. So that used to be subdivision 2A, took that out. Now it's all collapsed into one clean subdivision two without that language. And that's the only difference between the amendment you heard earlier and the amendment in front of you now, version two. Perfect. Are we okay? So procedurally, do we still need two votes? Yeah. And yes. the first one would be to vote out amendment. Uh, version two of the amendment to S-172. So moved. All right. All in, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So you wanna treat this as an informal vote and not call roll? Maybe oh, on the, the I was treating the amendment as such, but okay. we could we maybe we should call the roll on it. There's like I've, a whole section yeah. for amendment votes. Yeah. So I was curious. Yeah, that yeah, that's and do you have all the forms? I, I do. And okay. um Gail sent me a reminder of how this is working because <laughs> you know we've sometimes gotten in trouble with Secretary Bloomer. Um so after I call the roll, really the stars of the show are the reporter of the bill and Gail, she'll get a clean copy with Tucker's help or with whoever from Legislative Council's help to Secretary Bloomer. Mm -hmm. And the reporter of the bill shares the, and Gail also lets them know exactly when it was voted out favorably. The reporter of the bill then lets them know the votes and that they're the reporter of the bill. Gail, did I miss anything? Nope, that is correct. Okay. Thank you. It's so much more difficult doing it this way, isn't it? Than when you're in person, you have that little piece of paper that you just, so anyway. Exactly. All right, so we do have um, a motion by Senator Collimore and 
Um, Senator Rom Hinsdale, do you want to call the roll on that motion? Yes, amend, uh, version okay. two amendment. Mm -hmm. Senator Clarkson. Yes. Senator Collimore. Yes. Senator Polina. Yes. Myself, Senator Rom Hinsdale, and we'll want to change that, Gail. It just says my. Oh, yes, I will change that. Thank you. Um, yes, and uh, Chairwoman White. Yes. Okay. All right, now oh. we have a, a motion to report the bill. Favorably as amended. Okay. Would you like to call the roll? Sure. Senator Clarkson. Yes. Senator Collimore. Yes. Senator Polina. Yes. Myself, Senator Rom Hinsdale. Yes. Senator White. Yes. And thank you. And uh, Senator Collimore, would you like to um, report? Certainly. Okay. We Good passed job. our first bill. Yay. I Yay. think from here, what Gail will do is confirm with me that the vote looks correct. Okay. And then one of us, Gail, what, what makes the most sense? After I confirm it's correct, will you forward it to Senator Collimore? So I did fill out the record of action on this end mm -hmm. and I will forward that to you and you can concur. And then I'll take care of that. And then I think the clean copy of the bill actually has to come from me I mean, come from Tucker to me and then on to uh, Senator Collimore. And then from Senator Collimore to Secretary Bloomer. Right. So is that possible to do by the end of today so that we could have the first bill and get some special gold star? Absolutely. <laughs> I think the clean copy is actually the one that's posted, correct? Yeah, it should be. So well, we can we can I'm get it the, up to oh, go ahead. I'm in the I'm in the building. I don't know whether that will facilitate any <laughs> speed on this, but I'll be glad to uh, go up and check with the uh, John Bloomer. It would be great if we because if we passed it today, it would be on tomorrow. No, and and I don't and I believe that um, we have agreements to um, suspend rules to advance yeah. it. So we could actually vote on this bill tomorrow and get it to the House. Very exciting. Okay, so we'll do, you guys will do your magic and we'll see when it comes up on the floor. Okay. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Much. Yeah. That's, I, that may be a record even for our committee. <laughs> I, uh, Senator Doyle, when he, he was chair of GovOps when I first was on the committee and he, he always wanted to get the first bill up there. I, it was so funny because come on, come on, we got to get a bill up there right away. <laughs> so, all right. So committee, let's look at our, um, Tucker, is it possible for us and uh, having Gwen and Karen and Chris, Jim, whoever, join us tomorrow afternoon at 3.15 to talk about the open meeting law bill? Can we start the discussion tomorrow? Does that work for, okay. And Tucker, does that work for you? I can't see you for some reason. Yes, his thumb is up. Yes, okay. it works. Oh, there you are. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. So let's let's start that tomorrow. And there are a couple people who I know have um, expressed an interest in, if they can um, join us, Chris Campany from a Regional Planning Commission. And I don't know if, if you know of other people who at this point want to join us it's pretty short notice but we won't we won't finish it tomorrow i'm pretty sure so just let's let everybody know if you uh, many of us have heard from select board people and stuff let's let them know that we're going to yeah. start tomorrow at 3 15. yeah great um catherine dimitrick who's the franklin grand isle regional right. commission she would be interested 
Okay. Can you send her information to Gail? Yeah. Okay. And I'll send Chris's. So if anybody has a select board person or whoever that they've talked to that has an interest in just let them know that we're going to start the discussion tomorrow. If they can join us, that would be great. We may not have time for a lot of testimony because we're just starting at 3.15, um, but we'll at least let people know. So if great. you get their, their information to Gail, that would be great. And if they want to testify, great. Okay. Yeah, and, and we, they may not be testifying tomorrow because we may not get to them tomorrow, but we'll get them on the list. Okay. And then Thursday, committee, Thursday and Friday, I thought we would start walking through the, the bills that we've defined so far as priorities. And I thought we might start with the ethics bill since we that's one that's been hanging around for a long time and there seems to be a lot of interest in it. Does that make sense to start? We could have um, Amarin walk us through it and um, invite the, the new uh, director of the Ethics Commission. Um, Anthony, is that, does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Okay. And um, so we'll start with that one. We don't, and then I'll, I'll see if there are, um, if 147, if we can have somebody walk us through that one. Um, that's the language access one. So if we can walk through at least those two on Thursday and um, Okay, we'll figure out what else we're gonna try and walk through but um, and get people here to, not to take testimony necessarily, but to walk through so then we can decide if, if we wanna go forward with the bills or not. Is that? Yes. Okay, all right. So I'll, I'll try and schedule as many of the ones that we've identified already as priorities to walk through on Thursday and Friday as we can. Sounds good. Good. Okay. Thank you. I think this was a very productive first day.